Here is my one year clover update and everything you need to know before you choose to get one. Okay, so number one is definitely patchiness. Not in love with the level of germination. Now, if you guys watch the video that I did on clover, I did mention that there's several different ways you can do this. One is kind of like a pre-germination method, if you will, using just peat or compost. Another way would be to broadcast and put peat over. The third way would be just to broadcast. Now I did a combination of all of them. Hands down, the one that yielded the best levels of germination was the clover with a small sprinkling of peat over top. That one won out in regards to germination. <laughs> Number two is the claim of it being able to survive foot traffic. <clears throat> Let's talk about that. This entire area is my foot traffic area that I planted a heck of a lot of clover. Um, and as you can see, there's no clover there anymore because clover is not uh, foot traffic safe. If you had the intent of using this for a yard with dogs, I would skip it. Next issue with our clover friends is the fact that it's a perennial. I tried my best to make sure that I allowed the clover to reseed itself because it's a two to three year perennial, meaning if you don't let it sell seed, it will die in two to three years. You will definitely see thinning at around the two year mark. And what the flowers look like, in case you were wondering, is this. This is like a shitty version of what it should look like. And I have to do this because I did this in my childhood. Ashley had a baby and her head popped off. Oh, my head did not pop, popped off. Letting it self seed and flower would not be an issue if I didn't have a lawn that was like multiple different plants. I have grass in here. Grass needs to be clipped. If you want to learn more on how to make great grass, you're going to want to watch this video right here. And in it, I mention frequency of mowing and not letting it get this freaking long. Uh, otherwise it doesn't tell her. So clover, unfortunately would have to be mowed on a very regular basis to support grass. But if I don't want to support the grass, I just let the clover take over. So if you're trying to take clover and move it in to suppress grass, don't mow because your grass will kill itself if you do not mow it. If you mow, your clover will never overtake the grass and you will forever be stuck with a mixed lawn, which if that's what you want, wonderful. If it's not what you want, not great. So if you want a tidy looking lawn and you don't want incredibly long looking clover, that's not clover, this is an incredibly long piece of clover. If you don't want something that's this long and gangly on your lawn, you're gonna wanna go with the micro clover. If this bugs you, then you probably are not gonna like clover. Just a heads up, because you would have to let this sell seed to keep it up. Once you let it sell seed and then you cut it, you're establishing better clover root. If you cut it before then to try to keep things neat and tidy and nice and short, theoretically, you're gonna have poor growth and just a shitty clover stand. Which, good news, if you're trying to get rid of it, that's wonderful. One thing I often heard was that if you cut it on a regular basis, it will stay shorter. Not my experience, it just kills it. But if you choose to cut it, and when you do cut it after it sells seeds, don't cut it lower than two inches, which, I mean, falls in line with what I was saying anyways in regards to, like, gr cut grassing. Cut grassing. My God, I'm from Saskatoon, Saskatchewan. You probably shouldn't listen to anything my inbred ass says. Next is fertilizer. So if you want a mixed grass or like a mixed lawn, you're gonna wanna fertilize. You don't wanna fertilize with, you know, necessarily the same frequency you would with like a lawn lawn, but you do wanna fertilize in some capacity. If you want just a clover lawn, meaning you want the clover to outcompete an existing lawn, which is what I'm doing, you don't want to fertilize, no fertilizer, because clover fixes its own nitrogen, but it doesn't necessarily fix enough to support an entire lawn, particularly if you're removing the cuttings after you clip. So it will eventually choke out your lawn. If you choose to have a mixed lawn that you don't fertilize, but you want to have a mixed lawn without the fertilizer portion of it, as confusing as that may be, remove the bag and just allow it to cut free willy 
nilly willy. Now, if you want to learn more about the difference between organic and synthetic fertilizers, then I highly suggest you check out this video right here. And this is what Google's suggesting you watch based on what you've been searching on the tubes. So I'll talk to you guys next time. Bye.